Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Youth unemployment schemes in European Union EU bat rules put future of hundreds of churches at risk Three billion pound flop as just two homes get eco loans to install energy saving measures in six months EU regulation could restrict genealogical research plus EU to cut payments to large farms in subsidy shake-up. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First from our homepage. Leaders of the European Union will meet in Brussels on Thursday and Friday to discuss the state of Europe's economy and the growing problem of youth unemployment. Following are some facts and figures about joblessness amongst people and the aged under 25 in the European Union. 5.6 million young people were officially unemployed in the EU in April, with the overall youth jobless rate at 23%. European Union rules protect bat populations are putting hundreds of bat-infested churches in England at risk, according to an MP. Tony Baldry, who speaks officially on Church of England issues in the Commons, warned that church artefacts were being destroyed by bat droppings, with some buildings on the verge of becoming unsustainable as places of worship. He said that bats were threatening medieval wall paintings which had survived Thomas Cromwell's men and the ravages of the Reformation. Mr Baldry, a Conservative MP for Banbury, was speaking in a debate in Parliament's Westminster Hall. He attacked the European Union Habitats Directive, which he said left churches virtually powerless to move bats from their buildings. Just two households have installed energy-saving measures under the government's six-month-old green scheme, it was claimed yesterday. Critics say the £3 billion scheme will fail to meet ministers' predictions that 10,000 homes will take up the offer by next year. The Green Deal, launched by Chris Hewn, offers homeowners loans for work such as cavity wall insulation and energy-efficient boilers in the hope of reducing their energy bill. Households must pay for an assessment of what upgrades their house needs, which costs around £150. Whilst 20,000 assessments have been carried out since it was set up in January, only two homes have actually completed the work after being approved for a loan. Access to old parish records on microfilm in the National Library and to records held by states such as birth, death and marriage certificates could be restricted if a proposed European Union regulation on data protection goes ahead, the Genealogical Society of Ireland has said. General Secretary of the organisation, Michael Merrigan, said the EU proposed general data protection regulation requires public records held by the state, including public records at the General Registry Office, such as birth certificates, to be considered as personal information. For data protection purposes, we could end up in a situation where genealogical, biographical, historical or even journalistic research will be in some way curtailed. European Union negotiators agreed on Monday that large farms could lose up to 30% of their current EU subsidy payments in the future, but no more than that as part of the reforms to the bloc's 50 billion a year euro farm policy. Representatives from EU governments, the European Parliament and the European Commission reached provisional agreement on various elements of the complex reform during the first day of talks in Luxembourg. One of the reform's main objectives is to replace the current link between farm payments and historical production levels in many parts of Europe in favour of subsidies based on the size of agricultural holdings. Today in our video library, two weeks ago I ran a special report on anaerobic digesters. This stirred up some of you to write in on the topic and a number of you pointed out that there were already a number of installations across the UK, with some proving more successful than others. During my research I came across this short information film from Wales which gives a good explanation about anaerobic digesters and also looks at some examples of working implementations. 
Discussions across the UK have also begun as the political lobbying for shale gas fracking. So what is fracking? Well, fracking is a process developed in the USA. A cocktail of chemicals and water is injected into the ground under high pressure. This fractures the ground below. Trapped natural gas in the rock then escapes into these fractures and can be extracted. There is a lot of controversy and concern about the risks of poisoning the water table and land. Indeed, the documentary Gaslands investigates these very real risks, showing homes in the US where the residents can literally set fire to their tap water, and rivers and lakes have been terribly poisoned too. I should point out that the gas produced from anaerobic digesters and natural gas are both based upon methane. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below.